Okay. And what is your uh, feeling regarding incentives to attract business to Western North Carolina and Buncombe County? I'm a, uh, I received a degree at uh, Concord University in marketing. I'm a marketing guy. You know, if you haven't seen one of my signs, you haven't been in a car. So, uh, I mean, that's just the way I'm wired. I believe you have to incentivize people to open a business and to come here. Uh, I don't have a problem with, with incentives. I have a problem with handing somebody a lot of cash, but I don't have a problem with uh, give, determining what is the return on investment for the county. If I want to make an investment, I want to know what is, is the return for this county. I want to know how, how long it's going to take for us to get the return back so that the county can see the, uh, the uh, increase in revenue. Uh, but we cannot leave out our small businesses in this. Where normally people talk about getting incentives to others coming here, you've got to incentivize the small businesses by helping remove some of the burdens off of them so that they can increase their profits and therefore put that money back in the economy so we can have jobs and living wage jobs and help our children not be exported out of this county. Thank you, sir. Mr. King. Uh, I'd like to echo the same concerns that they have about uh, accountability. But I think the best way, to, to, I do support incentives. If we had a perfect world, we wouldn't need to do that. But if we're going to compete with Greenville, South Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, et cetera, et cetera, we've got to be in the incentive business to track some of these businesses. The best way I can explain that, in 1980, I went to work for a company across the river. It was called Switzer Turbochargers. They got incentives from Buncombe County and Asheville. Uh, 32 years later, they are still there. I can assure you they have paid back uh, more to the county in uh, taxes and business than they got in that original incentive. Ms. Van Dyne? Well, I would agree that incentives are frequently a good deal for the county. If they bring investment into the county, that eventually increases the tax rate. I also agree, of course, that um, every cent we spend has to be accounted for and uh, those investments have to be tracked. Uh, but I, I have one caution and that is we also have to look at the impact on the rest of the community. Um, there is a concern, for example, with the breweries coming in, um, moving existing small businesses out of the River District. and. Um, uh, have it making them compete with the really big guys that are coming in and and we have to be intentional about that and consider everyone in the community just not the big dogs coming in from outside I've got a specific question for mr. Belcher that relates to this we're gonna get him and give him 30 seconds to to respond to that and then an additional 30 seconds to either answer the additional question or expand on your current one and that is, what specific burdens would you remove to support small business, sir? Well, one of the things that uh, I, I just has driven people in Canmore crazy is ETJ. ETJ is, is and, it, and I run into it, if I stop and talk to anybody, which that's where I live in Canmore, if I stop and talk to anybody over there, yeah, whether it be Whit Motors, who for 30 years had had streamers up and the beautiful place that attracted uh, customers to their site, and then all of a sudden it's written that they can't have streamers and banners and things, yet you can go to a business. Oh, but no way. <laughs> Sorry, sir. We're gonna, Mr. King, do you, do you want to expand at all before you can answer that question, which is what specific burdens would you remove? What I was wanting to go back to the, to the incentives. incentives. Yes, sir. Uh, 30 seconds. What I would like to say about businesses coming to the larger businesses, and that's what we're talking about incentivizing, not our smaller business, but these larger businesses. I was the plant support buyer for that company for a number of years, and I can tell you just in Buncombe County alone, I probably spend close to $3 million a year uh, from everything from packaging to tooling. So, there's a lot of spin off when these companies come, so we, we do get our dollar if we get a good company here. Thank you. Ms. Van Dyne, did you need any more time? Ms. Wood. I do, thank you. Um, I'm going to say ETJ. Um, there's one, I'm, I'm on board with that too. It's a problem. It's from 4,000 properties, um, and it's a problem. 
and there's still problems in those areas that are under the control and regulation of, of the city of Asheville. But I also want to say I met with a big, large company uh, was it eight, eight <coughs> years ago, and they were not able to talk about how they could work on discounts on large volume water and sewer. I'm not saying that that's necessarily what we should do, but they couldn't even get to the table with a conversation. And then um, not Time. smaller businesses, I'm, I'm going to incentivize those too. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Delcher, we're going to start with you on the next question. Uh, it's actually a two-fold question. Uh, you had referred to the county uh, to a debt. Uh, is it your understanding that the county is running a budget deficit? And relating to that, what is the most important fiscal issue facing the county, and what specifically would you do about it? Well, the reason I bring up, bring up debt is because this country went through a, a, a balloon of euphoria the last several years and because of the industry that I'm in the home building industry I understood it better than anybody I knew it was going to explode I didn't know to the extent of what it would would do but I knew when they were giving loans to people that couldn't afford it it didn't matter what the interest rate was you know that this debt our kids are being raised thinking that a 30-year mortgage is a norm it's a great thing it'll never build equity and my concern with the county is that we have to run the county on the same type of principles that debt is not a great thing when you use words like leveraging and things you know like that 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 is a that is a big problem we're coming up on a reval and the reason i mentioned the uh, uh the housing is we're coming up on a reval and and we knew this was coming and all the time we're incurring this extra debt when when this reval is going to occur and people's property values are going to be less and we could have given them a proper a discount on we could have reduced their property tax but there's no way to do that with the debt well, I won't say there's no way to do that. But right. Thank you, sir. Mr. King? I would agree we need to keep our, our debt in line with our intake uh, <clears throat> as far as any specifics. What I would do it would simply be to work with the commission that is impaneled to come up with things. I can't give you specifics uh, other than I would work to make sure that we are physically responsible with the money that comes in and that we try to retire some debt before we incur other debt. So um, it would be based off of knowledge and information at the time. So it's kind of hard to sit up here and, and make these uh, decisions without having the facts. So thank you. Ms. Van Dyne? Well, I'd like to share some facts with you. Um, Buckham, County uh, Buckham County's debt load is extraordinarily well managed. Uh, the state of North Carolina has a ratio that they like counties like ours to stay under. And um, if we hit that ratio, um, we could hit that ratio with a debt level of um, $2.1 billion. And our debt is, I think, approximately $700 million. Um, we can, what, what we've done is we've made the choice if you think about it in, in, in Mr. Belcher's terms, it, we could spend money building uh, temporary classrooms for kids and or we could invest and borrow money to build a school. At the end of 15 years, we've spent the same amount of money, but we don't have a classroom. Um, we've invested in those schools. We've kept our debt low, and at the end of 30 years, we've got real classrooms that our kids have been in the whole time. Thank you. Um, I think debt is always something to be cautious of. You need to be thoughtful when you're going to incur debt in the county, um, and you need to be very, very careful with taxpayer dollars. I think it all comes down to if you agree that the debt that we have was right or not. I think that's the real conversation here. I think that schools are important. 1.7% interest rate is okay with me at the level, like Terry said, that we have to make sure that a an, an vital part of our infrastructure, kids and public education, uh, have the facilities that they need. Are we requesting more time? Okay, we'll start then with Mr. Belcher. We'll come back down since we have a few. I'm going to assure you that I am not interested in taking a nickel away from any children or schools, but 
there's just a principle of debt that you have to be very, very careful of. And I applaud the county for reducing the interest rate because that's fiscal responsibility. They did a really good job taking it down to 1.7%. But there are houses that my children cannot afford at 0%. So the percents at some point in time has to be taken into consideration with other things. And again, that is the amount of the debt and how quickly we've put it on and how quickly can we get it off. Thank you, sir. Mr. King? Um, likewise, I didn't realize we were talking about schools specifically, but, we're, uh, we're not. but I, I, I think uh, the, um, we go back to jobs here and, and uh, opportunity in those sides of things. If we can create economic opportunity and jobs here, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation because the whole idea is, is to try to keep our taxes down but grow our tax base with jobs and, and uh, business creation. And uh, that way we can move towards uh, funding what those things we need to do. Thank you, sir. Ms. Van Dyne? Our debt level is like having, I think, a $60,000 mortgage on a $180,000 house. Okay, that's, that's approximately um, where we are. And to, to take on that level of debt so that we can put people to work and build infrastructure, we are not borrowing to spend today. We are borrowing to build assets that will last us for decades. Um, it's good investment, it's a wise investment, and the return on investment will be. Right. Thank you, Ms. I think everyone pretty much knows where everyone is on it. Um, I, I am open, though, to a conversation uh, about let's look at how we can reduce it, if we can. But once again, we've talked about the cuts that are going to be coming possibly from the state and federal level. So not only is the rebound issues, but any possible cuts at those state level uh, positions are going to affect us as well. All right, Mr. King, the next question, we'll start with you. What would you do to encourage the involvement of women in government? How would you resolve issues that have led to the demise of the county's women's commission? I'm not familiar with the commission that you're speaking of. It has not existed for a few years. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> as as, that, that's uh, where, yeah, it's been, it's been, unfortunately. That's how I got involved in... in as far as encouraging, uh, you know, women, and I think we have a good representation now. I, I, this is not a question where I'm answering it in terms of I've been opposed or anything of that nature. But we have some wonderful women in, in positions in the county. Uh, Wanda Green, uh, we with Gabby Harris, uh, Mandy Stone. I mean, we have some great women that are doing a lot of good things for the county. So. Uh, I'm not sure what much more I could do to, we've got some good people, so we can point to them and say that the county, I think, is doing it. All right, thank you. Ms. Van Dyne? Well, it's kind of self-serving, but I could say vote for women in District 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, I, I, and I would agree, I think, I think um, we have a lot of wonderful, strong women in Bunker County. I don't see this as a, as, as a major problem. Um, you know, we just have to educate everybody, and if we educate everybody, I think the women in Bunker County will get their fair share. Okay, don't start my time yet. How's <laughs> the slaughter down for everybody? Because okay. I feel like I'm haunted in here and it might be looking bad on the Okay, uh, involving the women in government. I, I think, I think obviously women have, have taken a, a step forward, but there's, there's a long way to go. I have a 13-year-old daughter. She's learning firsthand exactly what the impacts of government are in her household. So, um, you know, any way we can, encourage anyone to be involved in the process uh, of, of government, governing, getting involved in their community is positive. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of folks would say that women have uh, the checkbook in most homes, but um, I think everybody coming to the table, man, woman, uh, brings uh, the conversations that we need. And I am glad to see more women are being, uh, you know, standing up and getting involved. Mr. My wife's the youngest of 14. Her mother died at 93. I, one of the things I, I write, and I write poetry from time to time, so. 
and I, wrote, I had the honor to write something about her life. If you are qualified for a position, you're qualified for a position. You just have to, people have to go out, and you have to encourage young ladies. My daughter's a teacher. I have encouraged her from the time she was tiny that she could do anything that she wanted to do. I told her one time we were in the car a couple of years ago, and there was a there was a possibility of a raise at, at a school. She needed a higher paid position. I told her about it, and then she looked at me and she said, "Daddy," she said, "I taught teach poor children to read." I went click. I knew that I that my Lord and my wife and I had raised her properly. She chose her path, and so that was her decision. And we cleared the path for her to be able to do that. And that's what we should do as adults. Clear the path for young women to be able to achieve whatever they are capable of and get out of the way. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with you, Ms. Van Dyne. It is two parts. Would you support adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the county's non-discrimination clause? Would you support offering domestic partner benefits to county employees? My background is in high tech, and uh, so the people that that work in high tech have a lot of education, they have a lot of skills, a lot of talent, and what I know is that they need to know that they're going to be evaluated strictly by their job performance. So yes, I would support adding GBLT protection to our uh, to our employee ordinance, um, ordinance. non-discrimination non discrimination policy. policy. Thank you. Um, in terms of uh, benefits, that we're spending taxpayer dollars. Our benefit packages <coughs> need to be in line with with what is reasonable and customary for um, other counties like ourselves. So um, at this point, I don't think that's the case. Uh, the, the purpose of benefits is to uh, to bring good people and your time. Thank you. Um, I was at the meeting where they, they brought this up just recently. I think many of us were. And um, it was interesting that it was a last minute amendment. And I think that a lot of folks are talking about these last minute amendments that come forward. And it's not a matter of if you like or don't like, the, it's the process. People are confused and they wake up and it's in the news cycle the next day. So I wanted to state that first. Um, I did hear after the closed session, uh, several different of the commissioners, one of the commissioner in particular said that, that it did have exposure for us. And I'm not going to vote for something or agree with something that's unknown and is going to potentially have uh, any legal or costs that I'm not aware of. Um, I think it's a state issue. Anytime we, we vary from the state you can see that with the longevity conversation that happened just a week before. When you vary from that state uh, policy, you create situations where some folks have and some folks don't. So I'm in favor of sticking with the state uh, plan right now. Specifically what in the state plan, man? Well, that, that was what I understood was what they said. The state said that they would, that it was just the way it was, passed. The mayor's amendment. Right. Okay. No, I just want to make sure. No, 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 not the mayor's amendment. No. Okay. That's no. Huh? That's what I don't. <laughs> no. That's the what state, I'm sure the states, the state, the way, what they passed was what the state recommended. What the county passed. What the okay. county passed is what the state recommended. Yeah. And like I said, can you give me one more second? I, she I asked me. We'll okay. Give you 30 seconds. All right. We'll, well now I'm good. I think I'm good on that. So. Okay. I thought you were saying what the county yeah. passed. That's why I was asking you to clarify. Mr. Belton? <laughs> I'll have you repeat the question, please. <laughs> <laughs> Would you support adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the county's non-discrimination clause? Would you support uh, offering domestic partner benefits to county employees? Uh, I was at the, at, at the meeting also, and I do not, I do not support it. Um, I've interviewed thousands of people uh, with, with our company over the years. You can't even ask anybody if they're married in an interview. The discrimination policy that they put forth at the county level was excellent. It was in accordance with many companies that I've seen across the country, and we had the EEOC in, in place. If someone, you, if, if you bat your eyes wrong at somebody and they let you go, the EEOC can take care of that. And it's not necessary. It would uh, add a burden to this county that we cannot afford, and I do not support uh, domestic partner benefits for the same reason. Thank you. Mr. King? Um, no, I do not support the uh, 
uh, amendment, or I'm not sure that they can legally do that, but but what I because I'm opposed to setting people apart. Well, if we, what we need, if there is a need here, then everyone should be treated as an employee of the county. It shouldn't be this group or that group. Everyone should be treated and given the same consideration. The only two things that need to be considered at work are your job performance and behavior on the job. So uh, let's protect, if there's a need to protect, let's protect every county employee and make sure that, that that's a uh, policy we have in place. Uh, as far as benefits, uh, I think that, uh, no, I don't support that, just like Terry said. Uh, I, I think that's not in line with what we're doing right now. Um, I'm not sure that, that, there's a lot of questions that, that need to be answered too with, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, we, we have a request, 30 seconds, Ms. Pendine. First, I'd like to state that I do not believe Discrimination is a problem in the county. I think they work very, very hard to be inclusive. Um, however, uh, someone in the county shared a story with me, and she said, if there is an elephant and a mouse in a room, how much time do you think the mouse spends worrying about the elephant versus how much time the elephant wor spends worrying about the mouse? And I think it's easy for us who are in privileged situations to think as long as everyone is treated the same, um, it's not a problem. Time. But it is. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Belcher, 30 seconds. <laughs> I met a girl by the name of Zoe at uh, Irwin High School the other day. Y'all remember Zoe. She stood up and she asked a question about her faith. She wanted to know where people stood on their, their faith and, and so on. She had the, the, uh, the courage to do that and stand up for herself. I encouraged her to continue to stand for what she believed in and work hard in her school and put, foot, put her foot on, her, on the gas. I was raised in the state of West Virginia. I've heard every West Virginia joke that's out there. I, I mean, <laughs> I've had, and I, I don't mean that. Yes, sorry, uh, sir. <laughs> Stories <laughs> take time, I know. Mr. King, 30 seconds. <laughs> um, regarding that issue, I have a number of gay and lesbian friends, and I have asked them about this, and, and they like the concept of being treated like everyone else, that, that if there is a need for a policy, and I'm like Terry, I, I'm not aware of, of any issues at hand, but uh, I know I wouldn't want to be separated as the old ball guy, you know, that put in that club and, and, and you know, treated separately. So, you know, I would want to be treated as a county employee and given the same consideration as everyone else. Thank you. 30 seconds, Ms. Van Gogh. Very quickly, all I would say is the state did not pass a constitutional amendment saying you can't be bald. <laughs> but they did pass a constitutional amendment saying that if you are gay or lesbian, you, are, you do not have the same rights as everybody else. And that's why this is an issue. Um, the uh, opposition uh, chose to drive a wedge between North Carolina over something that um, was really, I don't think, um, appropriate. And I apologize, that was Ms. Van Dyne's second 30 seconds. So Mr. Belcher, if you would like to finish your story with 30 seconds to do so. I just want to make sure that I was not equating West Virginia jokes with, this ser with a serious situation of, you know, uh, people's of discrimination. I'm just saying that, that Zoe, myself, my children, that that growth comes from tough times and people have to learn that that's just part of growing and we've got to treat everybody the way we want to be treated but we do not create have to create layers and and burdens upon the taxpayers to do that thank you I, I did get one question from the audience relating to this question again so i'm going to ask you for a one word answer yes or no do you support domestic partner benefits for county employees? We'll start with Ms. Van Dyne since your question, that was your question to begin with. No. Ms. Wood. Um, yeah. the state doesn't have it. No. Mr. Belcher? No. And Mr. King? No. All right, we have two more questions. And we will start with Ms. Wood. Mm -hmm. 
If you agree with a vision for Buncombe County that says the best schools, well-paying industries and jobs, the healthiest families, the cleanest environment in North Carolina, how would you achieve these goals? What are the priorities? Wow. Can I do that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one question or three? It's, if you agree, if you agree with the vision for Buncombe County that says the best schools, well-paying industries and jobs, the healthiest families, the cleanest environment in North Carolina, how would you achieve the goals? What would your priorities be in relation to those? So yes, schools, well-paying industries, schools, jobs, jobs, family, healthy environment, family, and clean environment. Is that right? Four things. Okay. Thirty seconds or a minute? One minute. Okay, oh, yeah. a minute. So like fifteen seconds each one. Um, no, you can prioritize. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Here we go. Um, I think jobs is my number one, and schools to follow, um, and of course family is important at home and in the community. Well, they're all important. Schools, uh, I want to make sure that we have enough classrooms, that, that we have enough teachers. I want to make sure that we are creating jobs, get, helping small businesses. Uh, we're helping bring those companies into the area. Um, healthy families, um, you know, that's going to include a partnership where we can help folks who are in these transitional areas get the healthy foods and get the things they need while we're creating these jobs 30 seconds. I can't believe it. I'm going to go ahead and extend okay. this one to a second, minute and a half. Okay. Each Thank you. Okay. So yeah, jobs. I mean, and, and I wanted to say that the tenant improvement program, I didn't get a chance to talk about it. It is, it is a good program that's going to address those folks who have been hurting in construction, empty commercial spaces that everyone knows has been tagged and needs fills and bring small business. Very, very small. I've been through the office. It's a quick turnaround on it. There's a solution. I'm only one vote. Uh, if, you, if you get me there, I hope you do. Uh, we can work together on solutions like that that target specific uh, problems or industries in the area. Families, uh, I've kind of already said we need to make sure that we're, they're healthy and coming along and they're still here and we have our craftsmen and workmen, workmen here when we do have those jobs come. Environment, agroforestry, I think, is where we need to look. We've got the Arboretum. That is, we have one of the only climates in the entire world. There's like this area, that's my degree, is one of four or five in the whole world. And we can grow things that nobody else can. And guess what? We need to grow them under trees. So it, everybody wins. Thank so, you, Ms. Wood. A minute and a half, Mr. Belcher. Well, separating all these is is very difficult. You cannot have a great uh, school system without great families and families working with that school system. I think the background, the, the backbone of, of any church or country or county is its families. And we have to be better role models. We have to be interested in education. We have to want to have an educated workforce. We have to be able to remove barriers for those children and encourage them and put uh, let them know that working hard is not a bad thing. That it will strengthen you and there is no telling what you can do. If you, I've told people in my Sunday school class, if you'll give God a blank canvas, no matter what you believe, but if you'll give him a blank canvas and get out of the way and work hard, there's no telling what you'll see in 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, jobs have to come here. We have to work diligently as commissioners to eliminate uh, the and keep it environmentally friendly. We're not going to take the tops of these mountains off. I'll assure you, I saw it done where I came from and I will be no part of it. At the same time, we can balance all of that and work together and I think the key is, is working together and doing what makes sense but the family is a key in this county. There's people under too much pressure from four dollars a gallon gas to taxes and everything else and they have a hard time working with their children at schools. Thank you sir. Mr. King? Um, all of us are going to agree that these are important issues and so I'm not going to uh, touch on each of them. What we do so what's important is what we do as an individual uh, to help achieve this. And any one of us are only one vote on the commission. And the important thing is to get on the commission and work with the other commissioners to hammer out the issues and work together, put aside personal uh, prejudices or whatever that may be standing in the way. That the, what I hear is people, they don't care so much 
whether you're Democrat, you're Republican, they simply want you to get together and work. They want us to come together as Democrats, as Republicans, independents, whatever. And so I will do that. My role will be to work with whoever sits on that commission and work to try and, and find a solution, not just come to a deadlock, but find a solution to resolve the problems that we may have in Buncombe County and also to continue with the good things that we have in Buncombe County. Thank you. All right. Mr. Belcher, we're two for next door. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I turned my page already. <laughs> I think we all agree that, that it's individual effort that, that, that in the end allows us to succeed or fail. But we also have a responsibility as a community to build an environment where that individual effort can thrive. And so, um, so what, what Buncombe County does is it, is it builds that infrastructure and it does it by providing incentives to good businesses for coming here. It does it primarily by, by building wonderful schools and also, of course, by providing for public safety. Um, so we need to do all of those things. We need um, to, to leverage that by taking advantage of the um, robust nonprofit community we have. But we also need, I think it's important, is to respect our county employees and to give them, the, give them what they need to be able to do their jobs. And, um, and, and work together. It's not going to be easy, uh, I think, um, with, with what's coming down from the state legislature. We're going we're gonna to have to ask our employees to do more with less. And so we need, to, that we need them to understand that we respect and we value their effort so that they can go out and do their jobs. All right, thank you. And actually, with the length of that last question, that will be our last question. Uh, just a couple of points of interest. Do you want to say we do have uh, Jane Wilden still here? It appears Representative Moffitt's uh, campaign manager has left, but we do have Jane here for questions. We do have other candidates as well. Uh, candidates and, or their representatives are here. Please don't hesitate to go and ask them questions. That is why they are here. Uh, Vote411.org, that is the League of Women Voters voter resource. Remember, it's likely that your polling station may have changed, your district may have changed if you're not sure where you go. We also have voter guides.